Hi and welcome to another episode from Spiral Physics Education. So we'll be looking at a few different uses of static electricity in this episode. That's going to include paint spraying, crop spraying and something called the electrostatic precipitator. And what you need to know to be able to get the most out of this lesson is uh, you need to know about uh, how to give objects static charge. You need to also know that only electrons move during the process of giving objects either static charge or an induced charge, and that uh, a charged object can give another object an induced charge. And you also need to know about the law of electrostatics. And if you're unsure about any of those, uh, do check out other videos on the channel to help you get up to speed on those before you continue with the, with the uh, concepts that are in this episode. So let's have a look at uh, paint spraying. So with paint spraying, um, the questions in exams are usually in two parts. The first part is, why do you give paint a static charge? And the second part is, why would you uh, give whatever it is you're charging, in this case it's going to be a bike frame, why would you give the bike frame an opposite charge? And um, students often try to merge those two reasons together, so they're two separate reasons uh, to and, and the the outcome is is beneficial. So um, the first question, if you can imagine what the question is, why would you give paint a static charge? Well, if you give uh, paint, in this case powder, a static charge um, because of let's say friction or it's attached to uh, a, 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 the terminal of uh, an electricity supply, um, all those different particles of paint when they come out they'll all have the same charge, they'll have light charges, and light charges repel. And what's the, what the outcome of that's going to be is uh, that you'll get a nice, fine, even spray. So that's the first thing. Uh, you give paint droplets or, or powder a static charge to produce a fine, even spray. So the next thing is, well, if you give the bike frame, in this case, an opposite charge, uh, what happens to, why would you give it an opposite charge and what happens to the paint? So let's, let's assume that the paint in this example is going to be positively charged and the bike frame is given an opposite charge and it's important that it's an opposite charge. So this is the first option. There are different, uh, there's another option in which you can uh, give the bike frame a charge, but we're going to look at those uh, separately. So the first option is give the bike frame an opposite charge. So if the paint is positively charged, give the bike frame a negative charge. And then as the paint droplets or, or uh, powder moves towards the bike frame, it will then do this. And when that's done, uh, you'll get uh, a paint job for the, uh, for, for the bike frame. And the thing is that uh, what's going to happen is that all those difficult places and nooks and the crannies of the bike or whatever it is you're painting, they'll get covered evenly with, uh, with, with paint, just as the easy bits. And this speeds up the painting process. You don't have to then make sure all of those little bits and difficult to get to parts of the bike um, uh, have got a coating of paint. What also happens is that um, paint that misses the frame initially will actually get attracted back on itself. Um, and what that's going to do then, it's going to make sure that the back of the bike is also painted evenly as the front of the bike. And that's going to that's going to produce, not, it's not only speed up the painting process, but it's going to produce less wastage as well. So it's better than just normal paint spray. So let's say instead of giving the bike frame an opposite charge, let's say we earth the bike frame. Um, and let's see what happens here. So the second option, earthing the bike frame, and that's what that symbol there at the bottom means. And what happens is, well, the outcome is exactly the same. So either you give the bike frame an opposite charge to the paint, or you earth it. So the result is going to be the same. Now let's say, in this example, uh, to make it a bit easier, let's say that the, uh, the paint has got uh, a negative charge and we can see what's going to happen um, uh, to, to the uh, bike frame when that negative paint arrives near it. So here you can see the negatively charged paint on the left hand side 
and uh, our, the bike frame, because it's earth, has got an equal number of uh, positive and negative charges. And uh, as, as the paint moves towards the bike, um, because uh, similar charges repel, the electrons that are in the bike, remember it's always the electrons that move, the electrons that are in the bike frame, well they're going to get repelled away and the most easiest route for them to get repelled away and get away from that negative paint is for them to go down to earth. And when they've all gone down to earth, that leaves the bike frame with an induced positive charge. And uh, that means that the paint, being negatively charged, will be attracted to the positively charged bike frame. So essentially, the bike frame has now got an opposite charge to the, uh, to the paint uh, by earthing it. Um, and that's why the results are the same. So you end up getting this. All the electrons on the, all the negatively charged paint particles are attracted to the positive charge in the bike frame, even around the back of the bike. And it gets painted. All right. So um, the other option that you've got is uh, not charge, not charging the bike frame, not giving it an opposite charge, and not earthing it. And this is what happens if you just hang up the, the bike frame. It's completely isolated from earth, and um, you end up um, trying to paint it with charged paint. Now the first layer will go on absolutely fine. Um, but what's happened now is that because that negatively charged paint has gone onto the bike frame, well, the bike frame is now negatively charged. So when you start looking at the next lot of paint that goes on it, because the next layer of paint is going to be negatively charged and the bike frame is negatively charged, the paint will get repelled. So it won't, it won't attract the paint um, powder and it will be a waste. It will get repelled. So with electrostatic paint spraying, um, you've got to uh, charge the paint and you've got to give the bike frame either an opposite charge or earth it. So let's have a look at insecticide spraying or crop spraying. So the insecticide is um, given a static charge as it leaves the, uh, the plane and uh, similar to electrostatic paint spraying it, it is given a, a static charge to make sure that you get a nice fine even spray and, and a cloud of insecticide uh, that, that falls out behind the aeroplane so it's a nice fine even spray so you don't you, you're gonna uh, you're going to then uh, dust uh, a greater area of, of land with this insecticide the second part, the second use, is that um, we are trying to uh, spray insecticide over an area that have got plants usually. Um, and of course uh, plants are earth because they're in the earth. And what that means is they've got an equal number of uh, positive and negative charges just like this. So in comes our aeroplane and it sprays uh, our insecticide in the area in the air which is going to be negatively charged in this example. So you've got a negative charge uh, above uh, the, the ground and that's going to then repel the electrons on the plants deeper down the plants or into the ground and it's going to give the plants an induced positive charge. Um, and because opposite charges attract, if we look closer at one particular plant, because opposite charges attract, then the insecticide is going to get attracted onto the plant. And it's going to even coat the underside of the leaves. So if you've got any pests that are, that are underneath the, the leaves, they're likely to get coated with the insecticide as well, rather than the usual uh, crop spraying process. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, electrostatic uh, precipitator. So these are, are added to chimneys so, and uh, in, in factories or power stations where material is burnt that releases uh, not only waste gases but smoke particles. And the important thing to realise for this is that the electrostatic precipitator um, only gets rid of the smoke particles. It doesn't get rid of uh, waste gases. So it makes the gas, it makes the, 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 the polluting products cleaner by removing the, the, the dirt particles, but not the waste gases like carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide 
Uh, it, it doesn't remove those, but it but it does remove the dust particles, the dirt in in the, in the smoke. So how how does it do that? So here we've got uh, a, a cross section of a chimney and the smoke and the dust particles. Uh, going up through it. So normally they would just pass straight up and they'd go out into the atmosphere and then they would pollute. Um, so instead what they do, this is the precipitator part, there is a grid uh, and there's also some collecting plates. And what they do is they attach the grid to a charge, in this case give it a positive charge, and the collecting plates are given a, an opposite charge, so in this case a negative charge. Uh, alternatively, they could be earthed, uh, but in this case, we're, we're giving them a negative charge. But the grid and the collecting plates must have opposite charges for this to work. So what's going to happen is that uh, the dust uh, and the waste gases are going to pass through the grid, and the, the smoke particles, the dirt and the dust, when they touch the grid, gain a positive charge. So they're given a positive charge because they touch the positive charge on the grid. And as they move up past the grid, they then get attracted to the collecting plates because the collecting plates have an opposite charge. And what that does then is remove the dirt, the dust particles, the smoke particles uh, from the waste gases. Unfortunately, the waste gases uh, continue to go up into the atmosphere. And usually after a while what happens is there's so much dirt that collects on the co collecting plate is that some sort of mechanical hammer will strike the collecting plates and those uh, dust particles, smoke particles will get collected and they'll be recycled. And Sometimes they're made into things like bricks and stuff like that, but uh, a hammer needs to uh, strike it to dislodge all the dirt to keep the process efficient. So hopefully you uh, found that episode on the uses of static electricity uh, useful, <laughs> I guess. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to check out other videos and hopefully uh, they will help you improve your understanding of physics um, and get those grades boosted for you. And I'll see you next time on Spiral Education Physics. Goodbye.